ठीक 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 सच से विभिन्न They dismounted at a hostelry which Don Quixote recognized as such and did not take to be a castle with moat, turrets, portcullis, and drawbridge. For ever since he had been vanquished, he talked, they quartered him in a room on the ground floor, where in place of leather hangings there were pieces of painted sarge such as they commonly use in villages. On one of them was painted by some very poor hand the rape of Helen, when the bold guest carried her off from Menelaus. and on the other was the story of Dido and Inez, she on a high tower. He noticed in the two stories that Helen did not go very reluctantly, for she was laughing slyly and roguishly. But the fair Dido was shown dropping tears the size of walnuts from her eye. Don Quixote, as he looked at them, observed, Those two ladies were very unfortunate not to have been born in this age, and I unfortunate above all men not to have been born in theirs. Had I fallen in with those gentlemen, Troy would not have been burned or Carthage destroyed, for it would have been only for me to slay Paris, and all these misfortunes would have been avoid the painter or writer, for it's all the same, who published the history of this new Don Quixote that has come out, must have been one of this sort, I think, Sanco, for he painted, but, putting this aside, Teddy, sell me, To Sam said, Seventy one inch big forty took, Chapter Ulxthai, of how de Quixote and Sancho reached their village seventy two inch big one hundred fifty five, full size all that day Don Quixote and Sancho remained in the village and in wait. Meanwhile, there arrived at the hostelry a traveller on Sevzer, Sam. Seth, the newly arrived gentleman put on a summer coat, and coming out to the gateway of the hostelry, which was wide and cool, addressing Don Quixote, who was pacing up and down there, to which Don Quixote. And the real Don Quixote of La Mancha, the famous, the valiant, the wise, the lover, the writer of wrongs, the guardian of minors and orphans. The he was more greedy than well spoken, and more dull than droll. And I am convinced that the enchanters who persecute Don Quixote the good have been trying to persecute me with Don Quixote the bad. But I don't know what to say, for I am ready to swear I left him shut up in the case of Del Nuncio. I took. Find it so did you to be. And though the adventures that befell me there are not by any means matters of enjoyment, but rather of regret, I do not regret them, simply because I have seen it. In a word, Senator Don Alvaro Tarf, I am Don Quixote of La Mancha. The one that fame speaks of, and not the unlucky one that has attempted to usurp my name and deck himself. I entreat your worship, by your devour as a gentleman, to be so good as to make a declaration before the all called of this village, that should you never in all your life have saw me until now. Sancho replied that it was a long story to tell, but he would tell him if they happened to be going the same road. By this dinner time arrived. And Don Quixote and Don Alvaro dined together. The alcald of the village came by chance into the inn together with a notary, and Don Quixote laid a petition before him, showing that it was requisite for his rights that Don Alvaro tarf. Many civilities and offers of service were exchanged by Don Alvaro and Don Quixote, in the course of which the great Manchigan displayed such good taste that he disabused Don Alvaro of the error. Evening came, they set out from the village, and after about half a league, two roads branched off, one leading to Don Quixote's village, the other the road Don Alvaro was to follow. In this short interval, Don Quixote told him of his unfortunate defeat, and of Dulcinea's enchantment and the remedy, all which threw Don Alvaro into fresh amazement, and embraced. That night he passed among trees again in order to give Sancho an opportunity of working out his penance, 
which he did in the same fashion as the night before, at the expense of the bark of the beech trees. The Duc de Don Quixote did not miss a single stroke of the count, and he found that together with those of the night before they made up three thousand and twenty-nine. The sun apparently had got up early to witness the sacrifice, and with his light they resumed their journey, discussing the deception practised on Don Alvaro, and saying how well done it. That day and night they travelled on, nor did anything worth mention happen to them, unless it was that in the course of the night Sancho finished off his task, whereat Don Quixote was beyond. He watched for daylight, to see if along the road he should fall in with his already disenchanted Lady Dulcinea, and as he pursued his journey there was no woman he met that he did not go up to, to see. Full of these thoughts and anxieties, they ascended a rising ground wherefrom they described their own village, at the sight of which Sancho fell on his knees, exclaiming, Open thine eyes, I'm bringing back money, for if I was well whipped, I went mounted like a gentleman. 72 Bikichi, 375, full size have done. 72 Chbigi, 35, chapter Elksaye, of the omens done Quixot had as he entered him. In its terror it ran to take shelter and hide itself under Dapple. Sent, sent it to Don Quixote, who was saying, Malum signum, malum signum, a hare fly, greyhounds chase it, Dulcinea appears not. He was answered by the one who had said, Thou shalt never see it again as long as thou livest, that he had taken a cage full of crickets from the other boy, and did not mean to give it back to him as long as he lived. Sancho took out four quartos from his pocket and gave them to the boy for the cage, which he placed in Don Quixote's hands, saying, There, center, there are the omens broken and destroyed. They then went on, and upon the green at the entrance of the town they came upon the curate, and the bachelor Samson Carrasco busy with their breviaries. It should be mentioned that Sancho had thrown, by way of a sumpter cloth, over Dapple and over the bundle of armor, the buckram robe painted with flames which they had put upon him at the duke's cap. He had also fixed the mitre on Dapple's head, the oddest transformation and decoration that ever as in the world underwent. They were at once recognized by both the curate and the bachelor, who came towards them with open arms. Don Quixote dismounted and received them with a close embrace, and the boys, who are lynxes that nothing escapes, spied out the ass's mitre and came running to see it, calling out it had been brought to Teresa Panza, Sancho's wife, as well, and she with her hair all loose and half nate, dragging Sanchica. I bring money, and that's the main thing, got by my own name, industry without wronging anybody. You bring the money, my good husband, said Ter. Don Quixote at once, without any regard to time. Withdrew it. The curate asked what they were. Don Quixote replied that he himself was to be called the shepherd Quixotize, and the bachelor the shepherd Carascan, and the curate the shepherd Curambro, and Sancho Panza the shepherd Pansino. Both were astounded at Don Quixote's new craze. However, lest he should once more make off out of the village from them in pursuit of his chivalry, they trusting that in the course of the year, and what's more, said Samson Carrasco, I am, as all the world knows, a very famous poet, and I'll be always making verses pastoral or courtly, or as it may come in. But what is most needful, sirs, is that teachers. If my lady, or I should say my shepherdess, happens to be called Anna, I'll sing her praises under the name of Anarda, and if Francisca, I'll call her Francinia. And so they took their leave of him, recommending and beseeching him to take care of his health and treat himself to a suitable diet. It so happened his niece, and the housekeeper overheard all the three of them said. And as soon as they were gone, they both of them came into de.
Why, to make choice of evils, it's better to be a knight errant than a shepherd. Look here, sinner. Take my advice, and I'm not giving you chapter Ulxiv, of how Don Quixote fell sick, and of the will he made, and how he died seventy-four inch and ninety-six, full size as nothing that is man's can last for ever. For whether it was of the dejection the thought of his defeat produced, or of heaven's will that so ordered it a fever settled upon him and kept him in his bed for six days, during which he was often visited by his they persuaded that it was grief at finding himself vanquished, and the object of his heart, the liberation and disenchantment of Dulcinea, unattained, that kept him in this state. But for all this Don Quixote could not shake off his sadness. His friends called in the doctor, who felt his pulse and was not very well satisfied with it, and said that in any case it would be well for him to attend to the health of his soul, as that of his body would Don Quixote heard this calmly, but not so his housekeeper, his niece, and his squire, who fell weeping bitterly, as if they had him lying dead before them. The doctor's opinion was that melancholy and depression were bringing him to his end. Don Quixote begged them to leave him to himself, as he had a wish to sleep a little. They obeyed, and he slept at one stretch, as the saying is more than six hours, so that the housekeeper and niece thought he was going to sleep for ever. But at the end of that time he woke up, and in a loud voice exclaimed, Blessed be Almighty God, who has shown me such goodness. In truth his mercies are boundless, and the sins of men can neither limit them nor keep them back. The niece listened with attention to her uncle's words, and they struck her as more coherent. My reason is now free and clear, rid of the dark shadows of ignorance that my unhappy constant study of those detestable books of chivalry cast over it. Now I see through their absurdities and deceptions, and it only grieves me that this destruction of my illusions has come so late that it leaves me no time to make some amends by reading other books that might be a niece. I feel myself at the point of death and I would fain meet it in such a way as to show that my life has not been so ill that I should leave behind me the name of a madman. For though I call into me, my dear, my good friends the curate, the bachelor Samson Carrasco, and Master Nicholas the barber, for I wish to confess and make my will. But his the instant to Don Quixote saw them, he exclaimed, Good news for you, good sirs, that I am no longer Don Quixote of La Mancha, but Alonso Quixano, whose way of life won for him. Now, am I the enemy of Amadis of Gaul and of the whole countless troop of his descendants? Odious to me now are all the profane stories of knight errantry. I feel, sirs, that I am rapidly drawing near death. A truce to jesting. Let me have a confessor to confess me, and a notary to make my will. The curate turned them all out and left alone with him confessed him. The bachelor went for the notary and returned shortly afterwards with him and with Sanco, who, having already learned from the bachelor the condition his master was in, and finding the housekeeper and the confession over, the curate came out saying, Alonso Quixano the good is indeed dying, and is indeed in his right mind. We may now go into him while he makes his will. The noted He said, he said, Come, don't be lazy, but get up from your bed and let us take to the fields and shepherds' trim as we agree. Perhaps behind some bush we shall find the lady Dulcinea disenchanted, as fine as fine can be, if it be that you are dying of vexation. Lay the blood. Item. I leave all my property absolutely to Antonia Quixina, my niece. Here present, after all has been deducted from the most available portion of it that may be required to satisfy. And the first disbursement I desire to be made is the payment of the wages I owe for the time my housekeeper has served me with twenty ducats over and above for a gown. The curate and the bachelor Samson Carrasco, now present, I appoint my executors. 
Item, it is my wish that if Antonia Quixina, my niece, desires to marry, she shall marry a man of whom it shall be first of all ascertained by information taken that he does not know what... Item, I entreat the aforesaid gentleman, my executor, that is it's... If any happy chance should lead them to discover the author, all were in a flutter and made haste to relieve him, and during the three days he lived after that on which he made his will he fainted away very often. The house was all in confusion. But still the niece ate and the housekeeper drank and Sancho Panza enjoyed himself, for inheriting property wipes out or softens down and seventy four chicky three hundred ninety walk full size at last Don Quixote's end came, after he had received all the sacraments, and had in full and forcible terms expressed. The notary was there at the time, and he said that in no book of chivalry had he ever read of any knight-errant dying in his bed so calmly and so like a Christian as Don Quixote, who, on perceiving it, the curate begged the notary to bear witness that Alonso Quixano the good, commonly called Don Quixote of La Mancha, had passed away from this present life, and died naturally. Such was the end of the ingenious gentleman of La Mancha, whose village side Hamie would not indicate precisely, in order to leave all the towns and villages of La Mancha to contend among them. The lamentations of Sanpo and the niece and housekeeper are omitted here, as well as the new epitaphs upon his tongue. Samson Carrasco, however, Put the following lines. He for the world but little cared, and at his feet the world was scared. A crazy man his life he passed, but in his senses died at last, and said most sage side him to his pen, rest here hung up by this brass wire, upon this shelf, O oh my pen, whether of skilful make or clumsy cut I know not, but ere they touch thee warn them, and as best thou canst say to them, Hold off, ye weaklings, hold your hands, adventure it, let none, for this impro- For me alone, God, was do, was do. And I shall remain satisfied, and proud to have been the first who has ever enjoyed the fruit of his writings as fully as he could desire. For my desire has been no other than to deliver over to the detis. Farewell. Seventy forge, forty nine, full size, 